Hi, welcome Karen Donnelly, Principal Trumpet of the National Arts Centre Orchestra, educator, um, and lots of things. So, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. I was wondering if you'd be willing to play for us today, and if so, maybe we could start with a little music. Sure, absolutely. Um, yeah. I would, I'm working on this new piece I discovered actually, uh, thanks to Facebook and the pandemic. <laughs> uh, actually, um, there's many people, as you know, uh, putting their content online. And um, this amazing trumpet player that I follow, uh, Jim Wilt, he's a member of the uh, Los Angeles Philharmonic. He, he uh, played this piece, it's called Miles Per Hour. And it's written by uh, an American composer, uh, Regina Harris Baiocchi. I hope I said that right. Mm -hmm. uh, she's she's an American, yeah. And she this is an homage to Miles Davis. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a cool it's a cool uh, so piece because it can be either solo trumpet or a duet, and it's a call and response kind of thing, mm -hmm. where one player is playing on stage and the other player is playing off stage. But I can, it also can be solo where the person can create the effect of to, uh, tone change with, with the, the famous harmony that Miles Davis, that sound that Miles Davis. So anyway, it's a new piece for me. So here's just the first uh, portion of it, okay? Mm -hmm. It goes on from there. Wow, but. that was so, so gorgeous. You achieved so many incredible color changes. Well, it sounded like five trumpet players back and forth. <laughs> oh, thank you. That cool technique it, you're doing, what's it called? Like, the, like I don't know what that is, <laughs> since I'm a violinist. What, what, what? Well, like, what? you had a sort of a rat, rattling, it must be a tonguing thing. Yeah, yeah, that's just tonguing with the mute, it sounds, ex uh, more percussive than normally mm -hmm. like it, it you know it would be normally like but like there's a normal notes you know but with the mute it's like it's it like another very... effect but of course i don't know the name of it it's like a growl uh yeah uh, that's the t color that this harmon mute offers okay. the way it's designed there's a, an immense amount of resistance mm -hmm. so it it um it does it does create that like buzzy sound is that what you mean yeah, yeah. anyway miles davis famous you know that yeah it's a great piece yeah. i'd love to, i can't wait to hear the whole thing well it's it's uh yeah i'm i it it goes on a, a a little bit more but within the same uh kind of and it's it's basically it's it's touching on uh, she wanted to uh, um 
sort of show the lineage of of of, of great uh, um, American trumpet players. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, anyway, so it's really cool. It, yeah, you'd mentioned if it's done with two trumpet players, one is off stage, which is something yeah. you often have to do. And sometimes you've been yeah. out in the hall or up. Yeah. And it's so hard to play with the orchestra when that happens, right? Yeah. It, I mean, it, you do a great it, job, but I can't imagine doing it myself. Well, yeah, it, it's a weird sensation, I'm not going to lie. Uh, and there's always, everybody's got, like, funny stories, and I actually have one, too, of playing off stage. you know, <laughs> once I was playing actually in the third balcony at the NAC to play an offstage like fanfare thing. Mm -hmm. And um, there was like a conference or something going on up there. <laughs> it was during the dress rehearsal and there was, and like I could hear somebody, but I had to do my like little Leonor three, mm -hmm. you know? So then of course somebody comes along and says, you can't play that here. And I'm like, well, Actually, I, I kind of have to. It, it's short, but so it was sort of funny. Everyone has those stories of like come trying to get back in the hall and the door's locked and, you know. But there is, there are elements of, of it is one of the, it's fun, but it's also very weird because you, you just have to go on pure faith and mm -hmm. then also feedback from people who are in the hall or on the stage. Like, am I at the right pitch? Because the farther you go, like mm -hmm. Doppler effect, the lower the pitch right. goes. Yeah. So you have to adjust. And then if you, your timing is, is on or off, you know, co composers often uh, write that in or make so that it's like just often a, like, um, like the Leonore three, it's like the orchestra stops and then you hear this mm -hmm. trumpet call or like Pines of Rome, the orchestra, it's just this bed of, mm -hmm. of sound, the catacombs movement of, of sound underneath this beautiful lyrical uh, offstage trumpet beautiful solo yeah yeah I, I must say I've had the uh, privilege of hearing your playing since we were at McGill University and I've always loved the lyrical quality of your playing thank you and Maria. maybe you could talk about your role as principal trumpet because it is a leadership position within the orchestra you're not just a soloist yep um yeah it's it's uh it's definitely there's the that's the I'm definitely the leader of the trumpet section obviously uh like the, that role is indicated in our collective agreement, but there's also the sort of unwritten rule, but everybody knows it, that I'm also the leader of the brass section. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do find that, um, you know, I, I do find my most successful leadership, uh, I believe, I should say, I, I think it's just by, by leading by example. Mm -hmm has been where I feel like I have been, it's been most successful for me. I mean, I, over the years, I remember being at, at McGill and the teachers there when I was playing first trumpet in the orchestra and they were like, you're the leader and you got to get these guys together and you got to like really old school, like mm -hmm. I got to crack the whip and, and you know, it, 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 it and you got to tell those guys what to do and that kind of thing. And it just, I personally, I feel like that's, um, like it, it's not, it doesn't bring in the collaborative element that is the most rewarding part of being an orchestra member and being a musician. That's that's the most rewarding part of the job for me is is the team work together to mm -hmm. go for this one uh, project of the concert. Mm -hmm. So I prefer by just like that they're all professionals and they're all on top of their their work and that I just if the more prepared and the more on top of it I am that if I can just play consistently in the way that you know and hopefully the conductor is happy with what they he or she is hearing then then the example is set and it's easy for everybody to follow like when i'm solid it's just easy for everybody to follow but i will note that i just noticed that nobody really cares that i am the leader of the brass section and then unless there's trouble yeah <laughs> And then, and then, the, and then it's like, well, you're the you're the boss. You gotta make the decisions. Like, ah, yeah. You come from a, a really big family. Yep. And uh, when when things are working at its best in an orchestra, I, I feel like it is like a family feeling because you're in usually for a very long time, right? Yeah. Um, it's not unusual for people to play with the same orchestra for 30, 40, 50 years, even. Especially our job. Mm -hmm. Such a good job. Yeah nice place to work nice place to live it would it's great yeah yep 
It is and definitely, yeah, we definitely, uh, I was actually just talking to one of the brass, my brass colleagues yesterday, and we were commenting on how, you know, we have this really great uh, con uh, idea of communication, and we're sort of like, we just always try to work for the, the better of the project and help each other when someone is, when someone is sort of struggling, especially like personally, mm -hmm. Something's going on. Like we gather around and we and we support that that person and we lift them up. We support that guy. You know. Yeah. It's it's fun. It's a really great, like you say, family. Yeah. And I felt during this pandemic, there's a real sense of community of musicians across the internet. You know, meeting people that you never would expect to meet, and we have this commonality. Whether people are amateurs or professionals, yeah. we love music, and it's a yeah. daily practice for us. Yeah. And you've been leading trumpet players, I believe, in daily warm-ups or well, weekly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> weekly. Yeah, I will say it's it's kind of my golden gem mm -hmm. of this pandemic. It's like sort of the most one of one of the most joyful moments that has come is I just started this group. We meet once a week. It initially started in it started last May, I think, uh, with my my students and my former students. Mm -hmm. Because I was getting, like, it had only been two months at that point. I was getting tired of, like, it's lonely practicing yeah. by yourself at home. It's boring, you know? So I just thought, hey, come on, guys and gals, let's go. You know, let's do this. So I, we're on Zoom. And everyone is muted except whoever's leading. And now it's been going on. So as this pandemic went on, I realized, well... One of my for, one of my former students says, "Hey, you know, so and so is sort of having a tough time. Is it okay if I invite that person?" I was like, "Absolutely." And then, and that can I invite? Then it sort of, then I was like, "Oh, okay, this is a bigger thing." So as I at it as it went on, so I created this private Facebook group, and I do have some people that I contact through email as well, but because they're not on Facebook, but uh, I, I have there's uh, over a hundred people in the group. Mm -hmm. But not that everybody comes to the weekly session, but I record it mm -hmm. and upload it. So some people who can't make the time because it's like, uh, whatever, uh, they, they watch this. It's really fun. They watch mm -hmm. the little YouTube video and, and we just play regular exercises together, metronome going. And like I said, the leader and, and now I've had many, many people, friends, I've asked them to, to share their practice routine mm -hmm. with with the uh, with with the group and and you know so we have this like incredible collection actually one of the people and they're from all across Canada too mm -hmm. like at one point we literally had coast to coast like mm -hmm. on one day it's it just timing some people there's sometimes there's lots of people from Alberta or Saskatchewan or of course there's a lot of um Ontario you know mm -hmm. um but now it's one of my one of my friends. She she showed the binder that she has of all the PDFs because people load the PDFs onto mm -hmm. so we have all the same material. She has this binder this thick of new material. Like and every day she's like, hmm, whose routine will I do today? You know, I'll do you know. So it's 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 fun and it also is it's uh, it's pretty nerdy, pretty trumpet nerdy. Mm -hmm. But but it's also kind of community. You know, like we miss the. The hanging out and the talking, hey, what's that mean? Hey, burr, 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 you know? Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of that, but we also, because people have just kind of come together for this one sole reason of and across the country. Actually, I do have a friend in France who joins and mm -hmm. one my longtime friend from Indonesia, he, he wakes up at 4 a.m. to wow. do it. <laughs> yeah. He's using his practice music because his family's asleep, but he, he's, he's like, are you crazy? He's like, yeah, it's fun. What are you talking about? I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. So, um, but uh, what was I saying? Anyway. Yeah. yeah. And an, I actually want to also to talk about one of your initiatives, the Canadian Women's Brass Collective. Mm -hmm. This started in person before the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was, that's a whole, yeah, that's a whole... But we do have a pretty active online mm -hmm. uh, thing going on. Once a month, we have just an online series of, of mostly panels uh, uh, and co co topics, discussions. Just, yeah, that, that is, it is a group that, that I, I started. But um, 
I was just the instigator. Like mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, we're actually a literally a collective. Mm -hmm. Everyone yeah. is, uh, and there's actually no membership. It, it, you know, it's like, I've had people contact me. Hi, how do I join? It's like, well, are you Canadian or do you live in Canada? And are you a brass player? And are you female? Well, then you're already a member, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like, no, everyone, it's, it's just a, my own inspiration was there exists already uh, and has existed for 25 years or more, the International Women's Brass uh, Conference mm -hmm. that happens every two years. And it's always towards the end of May and I can never go. Mm -hmm. We always have, that's usually where, our, like, usually falls right on the, like, the last week of our main series, and it's, like, usually a very big, fun piece that I, I don't want to miss, you know, or I wouldn't be able to miss because it's the music director on the podium. So, I have been, attended that conference, I think, once. Mm -hmm. Oh, twice. Twice. But, like, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, and I had this, like, oh, it's too bad that, that, that Canadian young players female and male, of, all, of all, all, all genders, you know, wouldn't have access to seeing this, have, uh, live, living this experience, because it is pretty special to look on stage and see only, only women playing a brass instrument. It is. I've and, seen some of those videos. They're posted. Yeah. I'll put a link in the description okay, of this video. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. And I was listening to this music, and it was so beautiful, but it, it did strike me. Wow. That's different. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I had this kind of like, it's funny to say this, but I had this kind of like ding dong realization of like, yeah, I guess that's, it, it does look kind of different with me sitting up there on the back row and all these big dudes and me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no wonder why I stick out. No wonder why not only I'm in a stick out job, like first trumpet, it sticks out anyways, you're supposed to. But I also visually, it, it looks, so I've always sort of seen, I just think of myself as a trumpet player, you know, but now when I, sometimes when I see these photos of the orchestra, I'm like, oh yeah, I, I guess that does look kind of weird, you know, sometimes I, like I'm the only person in the white blouse, you know, mm -hmm. that's right. And everyone's in the, you know, or whatever. Right. So it's, so I acknowledge that, but I, but truly like. I've only, see, I only try to see, I'm just trying to be a good trumpet player. That's it, you know, but it occurred to me like, okay, yes, I guess I, I am that person mm -hmm. that the younger female brass players like look up to me. Cause I had, I had people like that. I had, mm -hmm. I remember being in Saskatchewan before the internet and before mm -hmm. all the, that there was, I heard that there was one woman in the Toronto Symphony brass section. Mm -hmm. And at that time it was the late Joan Watson, who was the associate principal horn. And then she went on to play, I don't know, 20 years of, of principal in the COC. And anyway, before she died. But yeah, she was like, and that was a moment of like, okay, it, it can be done. I could do that. Yeah. But then when I went to McGill, there was in the trombone section of the Montreal Symphony, Vivian Lee playing second trombone. Mm -hmm. Okay. And every week I would go and I would see like that, that woman, one woman in that orchestra brass mm -hmm. section, it can be done. And then it's a, then I had this moment of like uh, younger professionals who I respect and admire uh, girl brass players coming to me and saying, you know, you were that person for me. I was like, oh boy, here we go. Wow. I guess I am that person. Yeah. So then I had this thing of like, maybe I should do something. Maybe I should like, so I talked to my, anyway, so I, with the help of others organized this weekend sort of uh, celebration and we, we just made up the name Canadian women's brass collective and somebody, we got a, one of our members in the collective designed the website and and it was really like shoestring and it still is shoestring. There's no money, you know, nobody makes money. It's all volunteer, but, but, uh, we pulled this thing off and it was extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of the young, uh, younger players, and we had this mentoring thing with like, like, uh, side by side type with the young students playing with us. And like one girl said to me, this is the greatest day of my life. You know, like I was like, Holy cow, you know, this is so that, that, but the thing that I like about this group is that it's, it's not just, it's just creating visibility. Mm -hmm. It's about mentoring 
and education, inspiring and creating visibility for, for, and that, that it can be done, you know, that there are, there, there is a opportunities and, and to sell, it's a really positive group celebrating, uh, you know, what, what we, what we know, what we've learned, who's come before us and hopefully what's coming ahead. Mm -hmm. So... I know in the violin world, I mean, there were always female soloists, but certainly fewer than the men. It was always harder. But there was definitely a very conscious bias against women in orchestra because it was considered that the violin, I've, I've read this, I can't remember where, it was too masculine of an instrument for a woman, which really seems very ridiculous. But um, a big change in our profession as orchestra musicians, which the public may not realize about, is that we mostly use screens in auditions. Yeah. And in many orchestras, it's screened all the way to the, the moment of hiring somebody. And as a woman, when I was doing auditions, when I was younger, I was told never wear any clicky heels, you know, so they can't tell. Yeah. And I believe there was a trailblazing trombonist, Abby Conant, yeah. in Germany in the 80s, yeah. who was playing in Munich and was trying to get the solo trombone job. Yeah. And I, I checked to make sure, yeah, the, the uh, Celi Badachi, the conductor, said to her, well, you know, we need, a, I need a man in that, or we need a man in that solo role. And she fought it and she fought it. She went through the courts and she finally did win. But I think she was the person who really got the screens up. I'm not sure, but. Well, I, I, yeah, I'm not a hundred percent sure, yeah. but for absolutely, absolutely. She is still a major advocator for mm -hmm. uh, female, um, yeah, for equality for, for equality. brass players yeah it, you know and we're nowhere near that i read an article like when i was preparing for the women's brass the first conference in 2019 mm -hmm. our little three-day event and um there was an article that came out uh online that said like of the top orchestras in the in the world and they listed you know um and there in in there was one female trumpet player Mm -hmm. In the top 20 orchestras in the world, there was one female. And, like, not... Uh, uh, that's the other thing, is is uh, women in leadership roles in, in brass or in brass sections mm -hmm. is very... Like, I was trying to think about it the other day, and I, I don't think there's any other principal female tr trumpet players in Canada besides me. And there mm -hmm. is one other one. There's a... There's a really famous, uh, she, and she a uh, famous trumpet player in the States, uh, icon, Susan Slaughter. And she started the International Women's Brass Conference. And actually, I'm just, isn't that interesting that she started that and I started the Canadian one. I just made that, uh, well, there you go, whatever. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, but Susan Slaughter in, in, in the 70s, I think it was 1976, mm -hmm. that she won principal in St. Louis. For seven years, you know, mm -hmm. and imagine her and Abby, like the level they, they must have just been incredible players mm -hmm. to basically uh, convince people to resist that stereotype that's mm -hmm. there. And that like that iconic thing of like, well, yeah, it's a powerful instrument. You need a powerful, you need a man. Mm -hmm. Imagine, you know, yeah, that's, it's, that's, that's really cool. Uh, it's very, and thank God they were there for us. Yeah. I probably wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for them. Well, the, the building we work in, the National Arts Center, was built in the late 60s, from the time we were born. And it's, um, it, it always makes me angry, but I understand it was the time that the change room is so oh, yeah. small for the women. Oh, yeah. it's like it's a tiny bathroom. And the men's, yeah. it's yeah. huge because they like, just assumed, right? Yeah. Twice as big. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Um, I'm very interested in your practice mentality, a little bit about your routine, because there are always commonalities across instruments. In terms well, of, yeah, I mean, I could ask you specific questions, but I'm sure you can talk to that. I, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I, I'm a good practicer. Mm -hmm. I, I practice. I mean, I always, I always joke, but it's true. Fear is a, an incredible motivator, <laughs> yeah. and. When you're first trumpet, like you're letting it all hang out. There mm -hmm. is nowhere to hide. If you are not on your game, uh, everyone knows it. It's not the classic thing, you know, like 
only your colleagues know. No, everyone knows. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I have an interesting practice sort of thing mm -hmm. that maybe uh, people don't, normal people don't know or whatever. But several years ago, I, I attended a master class. I'm, I'm always curious, mm -hmm. you know. I'm always uh, taking lessons myself, uh, attending master classes, trying to learn and, and, and grow and keep it fresh, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, you know, we've been in, we've been doing this now a couple of decades. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, so um, I, a few years ago, I, I attended this master class with this amazing trumpet player, Tom Putin, and he's also plays in the LA Philharmonic, actually. So, uh, he, he introduced this idea of using a practice chart mm -hmm. and a, and a timer. I use an app, a timer app that I, I can, I, you bought, it's a very clever app. It's actually an exercise app. Mm -hmm. So, but I can customize it. So I have where I, I, I basically, I work in cause trumpet is very physical and we have to protect the muscles around, mm -hmm. around the chops, you know, or on the lips. So I work in my rest as well as what I'm going to be practicing. Mm -hmm. So I, it's very, it's, I mean, I'm not super regimented, like, oh my God, the timer went off, I got to stop. You know, like I finished the phrase or I finished the etude and then you can start, but it's an incredible reminder for me to stop, mm -hmm. take the thing off my face. <laughs> and then it goes again. Oh yeah, it's a reminder to put the thing back on because you can get lost in writing an email or blah, 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 get distracted or, and then, Oh, how long have I, you know, I, so I love keeping track. And so my practice chart, um, actually it's upstairs. I was going to show you, but like, I just write all the requirements mm -hmm. of the technique, you know, like, uh, slurs, sound, um, scales, you know, mm -hmm. all the things like, but for us also, it, I guess you would be type of bow, but for mm -hmm. us, it's like the different kind of tonguing, the multiple mm -hmm. tonguing, double tongue, single tongue, K tongue triple tongue you know you got to check all those off ranges got to check all those off because it's a little bit like um it's a little bit like like well, i suppose probably same for you but like it, it it's like cooking a meal like if you leave a pot unattended it's gonna burn mm -hmm. or you leave a pot un un unattended it's gonna go cold either way right you know so so you have to make sure you're stirring all the pots so touching all the things so i i go through this cycle of of and i just love the like um like clear data when i check mm -hmm. it off i can see what have i neglected mm -hmm. after a few days i'm like oh geez i haven't done that yeah. for a few days and i've or i've forgotten so i i i it's been very efficient for me mm -hmm. and it saved my butt a few times mm -hmm. where i've like uh once when we were doing one of those big festivals and you know that we have like this huge yeah. stack of music that we churn through and who knows what we're rehearsing that day yeah. and that I was mixed up with the order and I thought this world premiere modern piece was mm -hmm. going to be in two weeks then I had time to work on the stuff but in lo and behold oh my god this thing is tomorrow mm -hmm. and it's got all this huge stuff blah 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 mm -hmm. and um luckily I'd been working on all that stuff in my practice chart that it, it, it I got I got away with it you know mm -hmm. but the 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 chart saved my butt, basically. <laughs> yeah. So. Do you have, um, do you like using metronome apps where the beats drop out? You know, I've heard some people like that. Oh, what's that? What app one, is one that? Of your, one of our brass colleagues told me about that. Yeah, it's like it goes and then it stops for a few beats so you oh. see how true your rhythm is. Oh my God, that's so cool. No, I don't know, who, <laughs> I don't know what that is. I gotta check that out. Yeah. I. I I believe I have person a, told me about that. Oh, I better check it out. I, yeah. I know who to talk to. Thank you. No, no, I, I, I liked, I like to use the metronome a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I would be nice to, I record myself a lot too. Yeah. yeah. And, um, in vibrato, I, I don't even know how you guys produce it. Honestly, if it's diaphragm or chops or what's going on there. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed you ask everybody about vibrato. Of course it's huge. <laughs> Um, it's an obsession of mine. Well, that's cool. I, uh, there are two, there are ways to do vibrato, like on the trumpet. Um, uh, we can use lip vibrato. So this whoa, 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 whoa with the lips. Mm -hmm. You can use hand vibrato, mm -hmm. mo actually moving the thing on your lips. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
or kind of a combo of both, you know. Mm -hmm. You can use the tongue, ta ya 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 a little bit. I should explain that I forgot to put my, in my little performance, I forgot to put my hair elastic around the third slide here. Uh -huh. Otherwise, it will, it, it, fall, it drops down and like actually lowers the tone by, by a, it will lower the pitch by a tone. So when I was using the mute, mm. I forgot to, yes. so that's why I had to like do a quick. Oh, okay, yeah. A elastic. Yeah. Nor normally, I, that would be in place. That wasn't part of the. What did they do before elastics? Like, is it always part of the? Well, that's. I think you. Yeah, I think you can hold your instrument up a little higher, and and because mm -hmm. gravity is going to cause that. And mm -hmm. if it's a if it's a well functioning slide, which hopefully it is, it's going to slide very sensitively. Mm -hmm. So, to adjust intonation. So I used the first slide to adjust intonation because that one was stabilized okay. by the nerd nerd talk trumpet nerd talk. Well, and you have <laughs> many trumpets. Oh yeah, tell us about your trumpet collection. Well, <laughs> my friends, my <laughs> friends make fun of me. Um, well, a carpenter needs her tools mm -hmm. in the toolbox. So yeah, so I do have maybe like 40 trumpets or something in. No, e I really thought it was a dozen. What oh no, you... no. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I yeah I ha I have I have like yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Well, you know, uh, we we have trump B flat trumpet, mm -hmm. C trumpet, D E flat piccolo, mm -hmm. flugelhorn cornet, rotary trumpet. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and then all the families of rotary, B flat rotary, C rotary, okay. uh, D rotary, uh, a family of cornet, B flat cornet, C cornet, E flat cornet, y you know, so mm -hmm. that, like, then I own several B flats because they're, they're, they're different models and different, mm -hmm. different sounds and different, uh, so I have a big B flat that I would use if I was ever playing a, 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 a big, uh, sonata, like a German sonata, Hindemith sonata. I would use a heavier, heavier B flat. Um, this is sort of mid range B flat. That's my normal everyday B flat. If I have, I'm playing a pop show. I have a very light, smaller bore, so it's much easier to project and play high. I, I, I have a B flat for that. I have the the first B flat my parents bought me Aww. in grade eight, um, or whatever. Yeah, and you know, so things like that. And then go through the same thing for C trumpet. I have like I have a nice rotation of C trumpets that okay. all are, are all good. Th thankfully for us, like trumpets aren't that expensive mm -hmm. compared to you guys. Mm -hmm. You probably spend more in your bow than I spend on one professional level trumpet. Probably, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> that's why I can have. And they're not they they're not all. Some of them are. Oh yeah, and then natural trumpet. I play a little bit of natural trumpet, so I have a few of those. You know? Tell us just a little bit about that, because not everyone understands about that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the history of the trumpet, um, mm -hmm. the, historically the instrument didn't have valves. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the like music, for example, like Mozart symphonies, Haydn symphonies, Schubert, uh, Schumann, uh, did I say Beethoven, they... they, they the instrument had no valves, so we could only play. That's why the instrument, the trumpet, is mostly a supportive role, mm -hmm. mostly doubling with the timpani, and so we would only be able to play the notes on the harmonic series, the open notes, like. Mm -hmm. So, and I just get those notes by adjusting lips and airspeed, mm -hmm. and then, um, so. Historically, that's why, you know, like we often play just one note or fanfare, you know, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. that's common. Um, so and, and, the, and the valve, the first, I mean, they, they invented this valve, the piston valve, but they went through all sorts of different, historically, they went through keys like you'd see on, on a saxophone. Mm -hmm. Like, like clapped keys on, on the, mm -hmm. to create. And actually the, the most famous trumpet concerto by Haydn was premiered on uh, a, a keyed trumpet. Hmm. So not a valved trumpet. So that was 
pretty incredible to hear to an instrument to be able to play in that range, um, a diatonic scale, because we would only be able to play the diatonic scale upper, in the upper uh, notes of the harmonic series, because it gets closer together. So. Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. And I was just thinking, like, you know, band teachers have to teach all the brass, you know, they have to mm -hmm. do all that. How different is it for you if you, for fun, try to play a tuba or a trombone or oh, French horn? Oh, it's very different. Yeah. I mean, this, the, like, the size, of, the size of the mouthpiece, mm -hmm. you know, uh, is, like, the, the, the trombone is, like, for sure that much bigger. Mm -hmm. And tuba is like yeah. that, you know. So you've got, horn is, is smaller here, you know, so you've got this whole range of, Mm -hmm. It is the same mechanics. Mm -hmm. I think it's sort of like the same mechanics of playing a viola mm -hmm. to a to a violin, maybe. Mm -hmm. But but physically, of course, you engage a wider vibration mm -hmm. that creates the sound on the lips. Like a trombone mouthpiece would go to here, and a tuba mouthpiece, mm -hmm. would, you know. So and uh, because the notes are the range is lower, the vibrations are mm -hmm. slower. But for sure, like. I theoretically could play all the, I, I understand, but I, I did try to play the trombone once. It's hilarious. It requires a way, a lot more air, but, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, yeah. It's so, essentially the same yeah. production. When you chose to play the trumpet, was it the sound or did someone just say, we need a trumpet player in the band? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, that's kind of a funny story. Like my mom, and like you mentioned, I, I come from a big family and, and my mom had the rule of we all had to take piano lessons mm -hmm. uh, for one, at least one year. I only did it for one year. And we all had to go in band. Oh, okay. Grade six. Mm -hmm. So because I come from a large family, I, I'll say, uh, you know, we weren't rolling in dough. Mm -hmm. Let's just say that. I, we weren't uh, starving by any means, but... Uh, there was a definitely a culture of hand-me-downs mm -hmm. and it was just simply ingrained like in our being of being mm -hmm. uh, frugal and not wasteful. Mm -hmm. So when grade six came along, I have a twin sister. Mm -hmm. um, that's her right there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my mom said to us, okay, you girls, uh, you're going to join band and you can pick any instrument you want, but just remember, we already have a flute and a trumpet in the house <laughs> because my older siblings played those mm -hmm. instruments. Well, that was like read between the lines, you know. Mm -hmm. So my twin sister picked the flute, so I got stuck with the trumpet, and that's mm -hmm. how it worked. There you go. And when you were in university, you didn't start out as a music major. Yeah, I, yeah, that's, yeah, I was a late bloomer to being serious about uh, music. Um, it's funny how, like now, as I look back, I think that was, I've always felt like that was a weakness, but I also think it's a strength mm -hmm. that I was a late bloomer because I always had this feeling of like, I got to catch up mm -hmm. because I did. I mean, I did. I, I had my first trumpet lesson, private trumpet lesson was in my second year of university. Really? Wow. Yeah. 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 You, you, you string players are probably, <laughs> yeah, you start when you're young, young, young. Yeah. yeah. So, but I was lucky my band program in Saskatchewan mm -hmm. where I grew up. I mean, it was, uh, huge. Mm -hmm. I had an incredible exposure. Like we played, I played in a, in the band, in a, in a, a jazz band, a jazz combo, a, a brass quintet, mm -hmm. chamber music. We had a marching band, which is super fun. We had an honor band, like all-star band where all the, so I, was playing at this with these i had i was playing all the time every day mm -hmm. and so i was developing control just by playing mm -hmm. um but the technique like specific technique was very slow and i actually kind of still struggle to this day like i wish i had somebody rattling every week mm -hmm. uh, about this third finger positioning because that still sort of haunts me and mm -hmm. is a main focus like i checked that box on mm -hmm. on the chart every yeah. day but you know uh and i think if i had it had had a teacher a, a, as a young player i maybe wouldn't um have as much trouble i don't know but like i said i had this feeling of like oh my god i catch up like i didn't even know the repertoire i didn't know you know 
I didn't know anything. I didn't know a double tongue. I didn't know anything. Like, anyway. And so, but that feeling of like being curious and always wanting to learn, I feel like has kept me engaged in the job. Mm -hmm. Whereas m perhaps other people would become bored or complacent if they had like been, had this intensive mm -hmm. study. So, yeah. Uh, there's one more thing I wanted to touch on before we end our conversation is the issue of auditions and excerpts. And I noticed with the Canadian Women's Brass Collective, online, I, like it was listed that you had an excerpt competition with yeah. the prize money, which is so cool. And the generation I grew up and where I studied at, at McGill in Indiana, there's no one was teaching excerpts. There was no, mm -hmm. as a string player, like a lot of us maybe were interested in playing in an orchestra, but no one was teaching that stuff. But for brass players, it's completely different. Yeah, I would say brass and winds. Yeah. Yeah, there's a real focus. Yeah, there's classes dedicated to that. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's definitely part of the of the training intense mm -hmm. uh, work on on. Actually, I just recently was doing this sort of uh, online uh, trumpet conference mm -hmm. and this guy, famous orchestral principal in America, major, big, big, one of the big five American orchestras, he He's talking about pictures on exhibition, you know, like, I don't have perfect pitch. Do you have perfect pitch? No. Oh, anyway, whatever. Dun, 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 you know, da, da, da. so this very famous trumpet excerpt. And he, he was, went in this in-depth explanation of how he prepares that. Like, mm -hmm. right from like, he plays the whole excerpt on just the first note. Nee, 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 nee. And then he wow. does it. Yeah. And then he does it on the first, it uh, does a loop. Nee, 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 nee. And a loop, like just to get like super minutia attention to detail. But I mean, he, he sounds amazing. I guess that's what we got to do. Yeah. That's, well, we all that's what we do. No, we all yeah. work differently, right? Different yeah. things work for different people. Yeah. Yeah. But so you're often on audition panels and I know you've done audition training and coaching. Is there any kind of general advice you'd give to people doing auditions? That's a great question. Wow. Um, you know, I always advocate, like I, I, I teach like many of us, like mm -hmm. you, you got to have the, the golden three, the trilogy, sound, pitch, rhythm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so if you don't have those blocks, you're done. Forget about it. Yeah. Then once you have those things, then it's the music. Then mm -hmm. you got to show the style. Then you got to show your musicianship. Then you got to show, you know, that you're willing to say something and take a risk. But you have to have the the, the magic three. Mm -hmm. Have to be, yeah. And I those are those are hard, 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 harder than it 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 seems. Yeah. To be consistent and in that moment preparing for months and then in that moment being able to like but i will also say my experience of being on a panel is is um the panel wants wants you to play well mm -hmm. they yeah. want to hear somebody who's awesome they want you to do well they want they want to hire somebody yeah so i think people think we're sit there back we're we're, we're there judging or whatever but i personally feel like it's we're there like this yeah for sure. Come on, let's go. Yeah, show yeah. me. You yeah. know, like, anyway, yeah. I, I'm listening to, to for someone, I'm thinking, wow, I just love to play with them, you know. That's the thing. That's what yeah. you want. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love that. Well, thanks so much for this conversation. I'm really glad we can make this happen. And I Thank hope to you see for you asking. in person soon. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs>